morning and welcome to our service this morning. I hope you've enjoyed the presence of the Lord in worship. I appreciate so much our worship team and, and uh, what a blessing they are to us. Today, as you can see, we're doing things a little bit different. Uh, this is Mother's Day, and we wanted to have a very special mother's service and presentation and ministry to our moms. They are very, very dear to us. So they're very special. And to all you mothers out there, we love you. And uh, to my mom that is in uh, uh, Van Buren, Arkansas, I want to say hello, mother. I love you so much. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life. You have been such an incredible blessing to me. And, of course, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you so much. Not only for that, but, Mom, all that you have done for me and what you've imparted and instilled into my life, um, the secrets of the kingdom, the love of God, the grace of the Holy Spirit. You've been such an incredible uh, influence, and uh, thank you for all you have done for me over the years, your prayers, your support, your wisdom, your counsel, and, of course, your love. We love you so much, and I'm so grateful to have such an awesome mother. Been very blessed. As a matter of fact, all of these up here with us have had awesome moms and uh, godly mothers that have raised us and imparted to us. And what I wanted to do today is ask uh, my wife, the mother of our three children, Cindy, to join us and share today uh, as we're just going to kind of have a discussion. I've got Jody uh, my, uh, and Lindsay here, my son and daughter-in-law. And then I've got Kristen and Landon here. I think most everyone knows them. Uh, but they are awesome mothers and raising wonderful children. And, of course, we have another son who's in Memphis and his wife, Beth. And she's a wonderful mother, just became a mother of a brand-new uh, baby boy, Lars. And so we want to greet them and welcome them and thank them for being a part of our lives. I was thinking uh, as we were looking about this service and thinking about the service as in prayer, I, I was taken to the story in Judges chapter 13. And it's an amazing story of how the angel of the Lord appeared to uh, the wife of Manoah. We don't even know this mother's name, but her husband's name was Manoah. And uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to her. She was barren, had not, was not able to conceive and have children. And the angel appeared to her and told her, you're going to have a son. And he's going to bring deliverance to Israel. But he gave uh, her some very specific instruction and I want to start reading in, uh, in Judges chapter 13. If you want to join with me in verse number 5, we'll start there. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God. Very awesome. But I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. I mean, if you're going to have a meeting like this, sometimes you don't think of all the questions to ask, right? And then verse 7, And he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine, nor similar drink, nor eat any Thing unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to the to God from the womb to the day of his death. Now, what's interesting here is not only does he give instructions to her about Samson, but he gives instructions to her about her as a mother, what she should hold back from, what she should not give herself to. Um, you know, moms have got an incredible role. They play an incredible role in the life of a child, especially in the formative years as babies and infants and toddlers you know mom seems to be the go-to and most children are mama's babies you know until they get a little older sometimes they then kind of become daddy's boys or daddy's girls but early on mom has the biggest influence i think in a child's life and he makes this statement i don't want you to drink anything strong uh the calling of god upon our life it it does mandate that we live sometimes by a different standard yeah. and what the world is able to do or maybe what others are able to do we're not always able as parents and even moms to 
to participate in. So I thought that was interesting as we look at the story that even she had restrictions upon her. We can talk about that here in a little bit if you want to speak into that. We're just going to kind of have an open discussion today, and I've asked them just to speak into this. Uh, this is very unrehearsed, so uh, you're going to be hearing what we hear for the first time ourselves. So they all wanted to know, what are the questions? And I said, well, we'll just ask them as we go along. So <laughs> they're real brave to come on <laughs> and do this with me today, and I appreciate that. Um, so he gives her instructions. Then verse 8, uh, he says, uh, then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us what we uh, shall uh, do for the child whom, who will be born. And God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of the Lord came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. What I think is interesting about this is that Manoah prayed for the angel to return. Now, he doesn't know now that it's an angel. He thinks it's just a man, a messenger, a man of God. But the angel does not come to Manoah. He comes back to Mama. And he addresses her. And he speaks to her. And I think there are things that Holy Spirit will say to Mom about her children. Uh, he will reveal to Mom things about their children that sometimes Dad doesn't even know. And I just thought it was interesting. Even though she, her name is not mentioned, she's the one that gets all the uh, addressing from the angel. Uh, but they're concerned about how do we raise this boy? This is a special child. Uh, this is not just another Israeli Hebrew child. But they recognized, okay, this is going to break barrenness off of me. You know, sometimes mothers, especially when they have unplanned children, can see it in the beginning as kind of a burden. And oftentimes we find that, you know, we have a whole institution called Planned Parenthood that wants to lift the burden off of a mother. But you know what? A child is a blessing of the Lord, isn't it? And it comes with a chore. It's, it's, it is a chore to raise children, no doubt. But it cannot be a burden because God has placed a mandate on every child's life. And if we see our children as burdens, we will not see them as the blessing that God intended them to be. You know, we have testimonies and stories of women who were raped and kept their child, and he became a mighty man of God. So I don't care how the baby is conceived, there's a purpose. God sees this child from its inception and even from the foundations of the earth. So Mom, and mom, I want to speak to you right now. I want you to know something. Your child is, is a blessing to you. Your child is not only a blessing to you, he's a blessing to your family. They are a blessing not only to your family, they are a blessing to your community. They are a blessing to society. They are a blessing to the kingdom of God. And I want you to understand, your child may have some challenges but they are a blessing from the Lord. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So it's interesting that they wanted to know how do we raise this child. And they asked for direction. Now, God gives them a value system. He downloads to them. Now, this child is going to be a Nazarite, meaning he is going to live a life that he will not be involved in certain things. There were three things that a Nazarite uh, was not allowed to do. Number one, they were not allowed to drink uh, any kind of strong drink or alcohol or even wine. They weren't even supposed to touch or be around uh, the vineyard or even have anything to do with that. The other thing they were not able, able to do is touch dead animals or dead people. They were supposed to consecrate themselves from the dead. The, second, the third thing was that they, he couldn't cut his hair. So this was a sign. Every other child, literally hear this, got their hair cut, but not Samson. Sometimes the calling of God upon our life makes us look a little different. It may require that we act a little different. You know, our boys are here, and um, they were raised in our home, of course, in a godly home and a Christian home. And we explained to them there are certain things that we as Christians don't do. We tried not to make it a preacher thing because... 
I didn't want them to despise the ministry. So we just said, hey, there's some things Christians don't do, and all their friends might be doing it, but we said, no, you're not going to do that. And they didn't understand it, and they didn't like it. There were things that they got mad at us about because we wouldn't let them do whatever other friends were doing. But you know what? They turned out all right. And uh, Landon, you and Lindsay are here. Why don't you speak into that, Lindsay? Why don't you start? Because I know that there were some times in your childhood, in your teenage years especially, that uh, you didn't really like the idea of not being able to do some of the things that your friends were doing. But speaking of that right now, maybe there's some mother out there that's struggling with how do I address this with my child? Because I don't want them to feel like they're different from the world or be ostracized or maybe made fun of. But, hey, we are different. We're a chosen people. We are a peculiar people. We are of a royal, holy, uh, a royal birth and a holy people. And so as a teenager, you know, I know that was a challenge for you at times. Speak into that for a moment. Well, I think um, you guys weren't controlling. And I think as a teenager, teenagers can see it as controlling. And even being a parent now, it's easy to control your kids, you know, even at a young age. So you, you look back at when you're a kid or a teenager and being a parent now, you know, it gives you a different perspective. And so I think as a parent, the parent needs to be confident and secure with the guidelines and boundaries that they set in place for their kids. And they have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And so bottom line, they have to be led by the Holy Spirit. But you weren't controlling. I mean, you did let me branch out and be in different bands and play at different venues. And so you weren't controlling. I know you weren't for everything that I, you know, was about. But you also let me have the freedom and experience. And, uh, and so I think there's a fine line between being controlling and also trusting the Holy Spirit with your kid. You know, and so looking at my life now, I've got to kind of, be a little less controlling, you know, and uh, see my kids more as a blessing than a burden, you know, Um, but I think, I think, yeah, for any parent who's struggling, any mom who's worried about, I want them to love me and like me, that wasn't y'all's goal, your goal was, you know, were your parent first, your friend second, you know, and and that was, that was really obvious when I couldn't do some of the things that I (laughs) wanted to do, Yeah. so, yeah. Well, you know, a, a lot of parents struggle with trying to be their friend. Uh, especially when you have parents that are kind of separated and children spend different time, you know, here with mom and the weekends with dad or vice versa. And in that situation, it's tough because parents and want to be, they want their kids to like them. And I've seen parents that are married with children, they still want their kids to be their friend. And that was always secondary for me uh, and your mom. We felt like that we were responsible to God as to how we raised you. The fear of the Lord had a lot to do with how we raised our kids. And we realized, you know what? One day when you grow up, uh, you'll appreciate what I and your mom instilled into you because my mom and dad instilled the same thing. I didn't like it. There were things that we couldn't do. Uh, Man, we couldn't go to movies. We couldn't go to the picture show. We couldn't go into other places that the world was going into. That was that's how we were raised. And uh, I didn't like it, but uh, I'm not saying that was a, a big thing, but there were things we were restricted from. But as I got older, I understood their value system. The point here is that God gave Manoah's wife and Samson's mother a value system. That he said, I want this son, this child of yours, that I'm giving you to have godly values. He didn't require that of every Hebrew, but for Samson, these were the requirements and these were the the boundaries. Let's talk about boundaries a minute. As a mother uh, and as a father, we're here talking about mothers today, so I'm going to let the mom speak into this because I could talk all day about it. But, honey, why don't you talk to us about boundaries and how important it is for parents to have boundaries, especially when the children are younger and even as they get older, you know. Uh, speaking to that a little bit. So parenting is a lot like a scale, like you would weigh different things on one side and the other, and it's got to be even. So you got to have this discipline on one side and love on the other side. And so you cannot have too much discipline on one side 
because your kids will be afraid of you and want to run away from you. Then if you have too much love on the other side, you're going to have spoiled brats. And they're going to want anything, and they're going to do anything because you as a parent want them to see you as a friend, and, you know, you don't want to hurt their psyche. And so you've got to have a balanced scale when you're raising. It's so important. You've got to discipline your kids, but then you've got to open up their spirit to you again. So you discipline and you tell them why, and then you go later and tell them, you know, I still love you, and you've got to draw their spirit back into you. Does that make sense? So um, raising our kids... Um, You know, we had to set boundaries. I remember growing up, and uh, a friend of mine, we grew up from grade school all the way to high school, and when she became a senior, she was into the party scene, and I wasn't, and so she tried to commit suicide, and I went to see her in the hospital, and I said, you know, I just felt bad that she was there, and she always knew I was there to pray for her, and she looked at me, and she said, I just wish that I could have been raised in a Christian home so that my mom would have set boundaries for me and I wouldn't be in the place where I am today because she had no boundaries and she got to so far off the track of partying that she ended up there in the hospital she said man I wish I would have had boundaries so they're so important as a parent to set those boundaries you know you raise up a child in the way he should go right and when he is old he will not depart from it I was thinking of how for mothers you know don't be anxious. You know, there's that verse, don't be anxious for nothing, right? So as a mom, there were times when, yeah, my kids would dabble into something or Lindsay had told me one time that he was through serving Jesus when he was in grade school. And that just dropped me to my knees because like I was raised in a Christian home. I had an awesome um, uh, upbringing, Christian parents. By the way, happy Mother's Day, mother. I love you so much. She's in a rehab hospital, and I just, we can't go see her, but anyway, she was an amazing mother, and also my mother in love. She's awesome. Anyway, so, but I remember that time when Lindsay told me that, like he was through, so with Jesus, and so I, Barney was Africa, so I immediately called him. I, don't, I didn't care what time it was. I called him, and I said, Lindsay's done. We've lost one of our sons. He's never going to follow Jesus ever again. And I'm crying, and I'm sitting on the floor, and he starts laughing. And it's like, seriously, that we've lost one of our sons to the devil. Like, <laughs> and you're going to say, don't. So he says, honey, just calm down. We've prayed. We've prayed. We've covered them by the blood. And that is huge. There are two things as parents that are huge. You've got to pray. You've got to pray for your kids. Every day, you've got to cover them with prayer. And number two, you've got to, it's, it takes a village to raise kids. That means you've got to keep them in church. Our kids didn't have an opinion of, uh, I have a headache, I'm not going, or, you know, okay, because we're going to pray for you, and you're going to be healed, and you go to church. So you, you can't use that one. And they have to go to church. When they were in high school, when they were in college, if they were under our roof, they went to church. And you've got to keep them in church. It's huge. And then you've got to instill within, I know I'm going on and on and on, but you've got to instill with them, them the voice of God. And how do they see God? They see you. And so your characteristics are going to rub off on your kids, and they're going to become who you are. So if you don't like what they're doing, look in the mirror. Because, you know, your kids are going to, they you know, taught. They're not going to get that. They're going to, you know, it's better taught than caught or caught than taught, right? that are caught and taught. So you have to walk the walk with your kids because they're going to see if you have fear or faith. What are you going to pass on down to your kids? Are you going to pass on characteristics of, you know, the Martha and Marys? You know, there are times when um, you think, do I go overboard spiritually for them so they'll be super Christians? That won't work because that will push them away sometimes. So you've got to have the two combined. There's the Martha uh, characteristic in the Mary, right? So Mary's got the heart. So you got to teach your kids the heart of Mary. Amen. Worship's important. Let's read the Bible together. Yeah. Let's learn scripture verses, you know. Let's, let's you know, soak in his presence. You know, you, I see my grandkids dancing in worship and right. raising their hands, right. and I love that as a grandmother. I love to watch them worshiping. But then there's the other side of the Martha characteristic, right? And Martha is, she's going to get things done. So there's that balance as well. You teach your kids the worship, but you also teach them good stewardship. You teach them what a good marriage is, and they're going to have good marriages if they see a good marriage. 
And so we as parents have to be such on spot, you know, representing God through us. Does that make sense? So because we taught our kids what a good marriage looks like. I mean, voila, look what we have. We have awesome daughter in loves. I have the best daughter in loves ever. And they are so sweet, and they're raising my grandkids. I could cry right now, but I'm not going to. But they're raising my grandkids to serve the Lord. And that's huge. That means more to me for Mother's Day than anything, that they are serving the Lord. And that is huge. So I want to thank my daughter-in-laws. <laughs> I want to thank my daughter-in-laws for raising those kids to serve the Lord, because that is the best Mother's Day gift ever. And so, anyway, what was the question? <laughs> anyway, um, about boundaries and stuff. So I'll hand this over to Kristen and let her share how she's teaching her girls boundaries. Well, you know, just talking about boundaries, teaching them the right way, I think it's also so important to be vulnerable in front of your kids. Like whenever you maybe lose your temper or they see you mess up in front of them, I think it's so important to go to them and humble yourself before them because, you know, it shows them just the humility, what that looks like, teaches them humility. So I, I just, you know, the Lord reminded me of just being vulnerable, being okay to stoop down and get down on their level and tell them, I'm sorry that I yelled. I'm sorry that I did this. And mommy, can you please forgive me? Like sometimes we need to ask our kids to forgive us because we've messed up because that's how we model. And, you know, it's funny that you mentioned train up a child in the way that they should go. Uh, that verse I've been studying, and um, I just listened to a message from Dr. Chuck Swindoll. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's an awesome teacher of the word. He has this great app, too, by the way, for all you parents out there. It's called Insight. Um, well, not just parents, but for anybody. But he's doing a biblical parenting series right now, and there's, like, a lot of podcasts that you can listen to. Such good stuff. But he breaks down, and I didn't even know this, but he said that the root meaning and train up a child in the way that sh- they should go, way in the Hebrew literally means not, like, in the way that we think, which, you know, when I've heard that verse, I thought, yeah, the path, like teaching them what's right, what's wrong, um, you know, to serve God, which we should, but the way means actually his or her way. So he's saying, like, really what that means is that each child has a specific God-given bent, and they're created unique, uniquely, and so what works for one child is not going to work for the other, and we can't compare our kids to, to each other, and so we have to train them in whatever their God-given bent is, whatever their giftings are. Like for both of my girls, one of the things that I see in them is that they are so drawn to music. And they, ever since they were little bitty babies, they have always sang, they wanna play on the piano. Right now they're doing piano lessons because I just see such a gifting for music and I wanna help cultivate that. And in that word, the uh, verse train up a child in the train part in the Hebrew, it actually means start or like cultivate. So when you look at start, cultivate in the way, his or her way, whatever their unique bent is, that g- how God created them, I have to cultivate that in them. And so I just, that was so enlightening for me. And I just, it's been so powerful just hearing that teaching that uh, like I see those giftings in them, but then I also see like their strengths and weaknesses, you know, like for Avery, she is a leader, she's super driven, self-starter, but Allie's completely different. So the way that I teach her and train her, it cannot be the same way as with Allie because right. Allie's going to be frustrated. Yes. And you know, in the word it says, don't crush their spirit. Right. I don't right. want to crush their spirit by yeah. expecting, well, you didn't do it like Avery right. did, so, yes. you know, you, you didn't do it right. That's real good. And so it's just been such a powerful word to really uh, kind of unpack that and, yeah. and know really what that means. You know, that's really important because uh, every child is different. You know, we've got children, families here who have uh, autistic children, and that is a huge challenge. And you have to be able to communicate to them uh, and respond to them differently. But, you know, I know both of your kids, and you're right, man. You you nailed it with their personalities. Uh, I noticed Landon is, and we may do something like this for Father's Day and come back and have this conversation because this is a great thing. But I noticed you guys have two boys, um, Hudson and Hendricks, and you have two girls. 
Allie and Avery. Avery. Of course, Lauren has one of each. And uh, but it's interesting to watch the way the girls are. Get, we've raised three boys, so we're kind of used to that. And so now we're watching the girls get raised. And I know there's a sensitivity factor there. Girls are super sensitive, uh, and how you communicate to them is different than sometimes you know, how you have to communicate to the boys. <laughs> you know, they're not they're not quite as tender sometimes um, as girls are. And I notice Landon does a great job of communicating and loving on his kids um, as they are girls. Landon, you want to speak into that for a moment? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if I have an answer for that. This is my first time raising two girls. Uh, but, you know, one thought that I had when you were talking about discipline was disciplining your kids with their destiny in mind. And don't let the world pressure you into disciplining them the way the world thinks you should discipline them. Yeah, that's good. Discipline them according to what the word says. That's right. That's if right. If you let the world pressure you in, you're going to raise kids to look like the world. That's right. If you raise them according to the word, you're going to raise kids according to the word. And Amen. that's what ultimately... You know, we want them to fulfill the destiny for their life, and yeah. you can't um, delegate discipline. Boy, that's true. It's always inconvenient. Yeah. There's never a good time to discipline your kid. It's always like, I got a hundred other things I need to do, but I got to stop right here. Right. And yeah. it, right. But you know what? It's so important because yeah. if you stay on top of it over time, you'll see God begin to work in their life, and you'll begin to see things that you never probably wouldn't have seen, and it's. Um, it's definitely something that um, is an awesome responsibility and teaching moments that we have. I think with our two girls, my, um, my biggest thing is uh, just making sure that when I talk to them, I'm talking to them out of love and not frustration. Yeah. And if I do get frustrated, don't come across that way. Maybe me taking a step back or just gently. I can look at my daughter Avery or Allie, the one one look and they'll start crying you know they're so sensitive you know yeah. and so i gotta realize they got a tender heart and uh i gotta realize where the line is you know i got it across they get it we're good there's no need to pound them into the ground for it right and right. it's kind of like you have a toolbox you don't always have to bring the hammer out that's right there's that's a right. lot of other tools in there, there you go. that you get the lesson across good word and so that's that's one thing that i've learned that's a good word very good you know i looking at this story with uh Samson, we know that Manoah's wife and Samson's mom, this is who Samson came out of. And the word Samson, the name Samson, actually means like the sun. The, the Greek pronunciation is shimshon, which is sunlight. And so uh, what's interesting about that is that what our job is in Moms, you play a huge role in this, is to get the sun of Jesus to shine through your children in whatever capacity God wants to shine through him. You know, uh, your children are all different, and everybody's children are different. As you mentioned, you've got a real leader in one, and, and one's a little bit different, and you, but Jesus is going to shine through their personalities. Uh, and, and that's our job is to discover, help them discover what their gifting is, what their calling is. A four-year-old isn't thinking about destiny. Uh, six years old, seven-year-old, very few of them are thinking eternally. You know, That's why we have to set the value system for them. That's why we say we don't talk that way. We don't act that way. We don't say those things. That's not how we treat one another. And I know that if a child is allowed to say no to his mother or her mother or her dad or his dad, then they'll be able, if they, they get away with that, they're used to saying no to authority because mom don't want to discipline them or they don't want to break, quote, their spirit, then they're going to be used to saying no to authority. When God calls them, they may just say no to God. We have to understand one day God's going to start speaking to these children. And how we allow them to respond to us when we tell them to do certain things or how to act. If we allow them to get on and do their own thing, I'm telling you what, friend, you're going to, mom, you're going to have a real problem down the road trying to get them to understand and value the principles of the kingdom. So be encouraged. It is a challenging. Um, I want to go to you in just a moment, Jody. But before I do, there's another story in the Bible of uh, Rebecca 
who had uh, twins in her. This was Isaac's wife. And while she was carrying these twins, uh, she was having a battle because they were getting it on inside her stomach, her womb. They were <laughs> struggled. She said, he, you know, her husband says, you know, you, this is all good. You're doing great. And she said, if I'm doing great, then tell me what is going on inside of me because these kids are about to tear each other up in here. And the word came to her and said, it's because you have two nations inside of you. I want you to get that. Sometimes children don't know what to do with their destiny inside of them. Sometimes they're aggressive. Sometimes they're hard-headed. Sometimes they're bullheaded. Sometimes they're stubborn. Sometimes they have a propensity to fight and struggle because there's a nation inside of them. There's a calling and a mandate. Every, person, every child has its own personality. You've got this child that's a, a peacemaker. They just get along with everybody. Then you've got those that are called to rule the world called to storm the gates of hell you know you're not going to have a passive child to do that you know what i'm saying i mean we're all warriors in the name of the lord but uh with the callings of god i think you can look at children's personalities and see you you've got greatness all over you instead of looking at them going this kid's about to drive me crazy you know they're always getting into trouble uh i remember one time Mike Murdoch, who's a great man of God and great wisdom, he's a modern-day Solomon, he, he said his mother, he said, when I was a kid, I just talked all the time, just loved to talk, 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 just talk, 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 just controlled every conversation, just wanted to talk. And she said, you know, hon, uh, you love to talk. So we need to make sure that when you say something, you're saying something people want to hear. So she discovered, she didn't tell him stop talking. She taught him how to say something of substance. And he became a modern-day Solomon and has written hundreds of books on wisdom. And, and so I think it's understanding. My child has a bent, has a gift, has a talent, has a passion. And, and you discover that. Instead of stifling that and say, shut up and be quiet, realize this may be God calling a preacher. You know, maybe, maybe there's a warrior inside your child. That's why he's always storming and running out, you know, and doing things. I'm thinking of your children right now because... But they, they, I watch them, and man, they are, they are that way. They've got that energy that, that part of that's just being boys. But sometimes boys are just real passive too. It's not always just the being a boy. But speak to that, Jody, because I know you have you're raising two beautiful boys, and they are different. Yeah. But they do struggle, and they fight, and they argue a little bit, and pick on one another, and. And we got two nations maybe in our house because, <laughs> my God. There you go. There you I'm going to start saying that. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to piggyback off of that, it's funny. You said peacemaker and, like, world changer because I see that as Hudson and Hendrix. Yeah. Hudson's very much, like, just wants everybody to love him and just so yeah. sweet. And Hendrix is, like, just a wrecking ball every time he walks in the room. But but he has charisma, and everybody mm -hmm. loves him. Yeah. Um, but it's funny that we're talking about boundaries and just calling because God has been stirring my heart. And I was on a Zoom call with um, our OSM students last Monday night, and one of the girls on the call said, asked a question, and she said, you know, the past couple of weeks I've been just really convicted over certain TV shows mm. that, my, that I allow my three-year-old to watch. And she was like, but, you know, I was raised in a pastor's home, and I was picked on because I wasn't allowed to watch certain things, right. and I wasn't allowed to do the things everyone else was doing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I struggle with that battle of boundaries. And, you know, do I let him watch it because it's not a big deal, or do I obey this conviction? Mm -hmm. And just a couple of things immediately came to mind that I just wanted to share because I think it just lines up perfectly with this conversation. But I just told her, you know, we all have callings on our lives, right? We're pastors. Some of us are evangelists. Some of us, you know, are in our workplace walking out our calling. And, and the call of God on us as adults creates boundaries in my life, right? That's right. That's I right. can't go out and just get drunk every weekend because I'm a pastor and people wouldn't like that. Yeah. They wouldn't, the influence wouldn't be there. And I just told my friend on the Zoom call, you know, 
our kids have callings, just like we're all saying, our kids have calling on their life. And one of the phrases we say all the time is, there is no junior Holy Spirit. And so just like we guard the Holy Spirit and we guard God's presence in our lives as grownups, we have to help them because they don't know how to nurture that yet. And so we have to guard and create those boundaries for our kiddos. And it will look different for each kid. But a story that comes to mind on this that we've been studying um, this last week in OSM was the story of Daniel and how he, you know, when Babylon captured the the Jewish people at that time, they chose a, a handful of the guys and took them captive and were going to train them up in the Babylonian culture. But Daniel, and we know the story y'all sang about the three guys in the fire and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, they would not adapt to the Babylonian culture. They kept their names. They didn't want to eat that food. And Holy Spirit just made me think of Daniel's mom and how, you know, when those guys got captured, I wonder what their parents were thinking. You know, if we ever see our son again, is he going to be a totally different person? But the seeds that they sowed in those guys' lives enabled them to say no when they were in this new culture. And even for parents, you know, that have kids that go to, maybe you're divorced, and so they go to another family, you know, they go to the spouse's home over the weekend or whatever, and they don't have the same roles. The seeds that we sow into our kids as godly parents and godly moms will enable our kids to say no to things even when we're not around because of the boundaries that we place on them. So Amen. it's just a powerful thing. Yeah. And, and our blood is, I mean, we're going to be responsible for their blood when we get to heaven. Did we do our part yes. to cover them when they were in our home? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that reminded me of how when they're in our home, and even as teenagers and young adults, if they're still in our home, we want them to hear our voice, right? Yeah. Like, don't do this, or do this, or act this way, or don't do that, or whatever. But then we are training them, the seeds in them, to hear God's voice. Because they're going to get out on their own. They're going to have kids of their own. And so they have to hear God's voice, right? So we as parents have to train train our kids not to only hear our, you know, request and our voice, but to hear God's voice. That's just huge. So I wanted to piggyback on that, Jody. And can I just say one thing about the what kids should watch. I think we are in such a generation of just social things like on the iPad, like it's just so easy in this day and age to just give your kid your phone or your iPad because you're busy and you have to, which I understand that sometimes we have those moments where we have to occupy them, but I think it's so important to guard what they watch because there's so many subliminal messages that are being infiltrated in TV shows in this generation that we think, are maybe innocent, but I think you need to know what your kids are watching. You need to be filtering what you allow them to have on the yes. iPad or on your phone, because even with YouTube kids, there's stuff that has been leaked through that. And so it's our job to, to see what they're watching to help guard that, because they don't know how to, to handle that, you know? Yes. And it's just the enemy creeps in and sneaks in. And so I just wanted to speak to that, because I think in this day and age, it's so huge. Yeah. And it's really important that we guard exactly, you know, we, we need to know what they're watching. Yes, I wanted to say this before I give it back to you. Um, I, I'm i real concerned because I believe that there is a diabolical plot from the pit of hell through Hollywood to capture our children, yeah. to indoctrinate our children. Uh, it's subliminal, it's some of it, some of it's blatant. Yeah. Some of it's horror, some of it's uh, demon and, yeah. and, and demons and werewolves and all that. Um, children do not have the filter system to recognize what's, what's good and what's not good, what's God and what's evil. And that's where parents have got to step up. And I'm going to say something to you right now. Um, spirits travel through mediums they travel through television they travel through music they they travel through sound and they can they can invade your world they can invade your home they can invade your children's lives we are in such an age with modern technology and everybody's got a phone i think one of the biggest challenges that uh we had with with our children at times was their 
their ability to get involved emotional, emotionally with other people by the phone. Yeah. Didn't have to be with them. They could live in another state. And they already in love at 16, and they're going to have four children together, <laughs> and they're going to get married, and they don't even know this girl. I'm like, this is scary to me because hearts can be given. It's kind of funny, but it's not. Because hearts, hearts can be given away through texting, through, through what we're doing right now, through social media. And so, parents, I'm going to say something to you. You may not like me after this, but you really need, you are, you are responsible for what goes into your kids' lives. You would not feed your children poison for breakfast. And you cannot allow the enemy to, to feed them poison just because you're too busy or you're too in, unengaged to take time to find out what your kids are into. And you need to put parental guidances on your phones and on the computers and on the laptops and all this stuff. I can't say enough about this. This is a dangerous world we're living in right now. I mean, there are predators everywhere. And the devil, he doesn't play fair. So you have to be vigilant. When you talked about praying over your children earlier, you know, not only do you need to pray, you need to play with your children. You need to get involved with your children. You need to spend time with your children. You need to preach to your children, teach your children, do all of those things because you really have the biggest voice and the greatest influence unless you give it away. Yeah, when you were just saying that, it reminded me the other day we were on the golf course and I said, Landon, do you remember that prayer that we would pray before school every day? Besides the armor, we put the armor on, but we're growing in the Lord. And he repeated it with me. So from kindergarten, first grade up, he still remembered that same verse, which was cool. You know, as Christians, um, and it's important to catch this, as Christian parents, um, I want to give y'all a visual of how important it is what you're instilling in your children because, you know, if you go buy some cauliflower and it just sits in your crisper in the fridge, eventually it's going to mold, but it molds from the inside out. So by the time you see it on the outside, it's already destroyed on the inside. So as Christian parents, we've got to mold our kids from the inside out. You know what I'm saying? So instead of pushing them to look a certain way, talk a certain way, be whatever, yeah, they can do things of the world. They can be part of sports or whatever, but make sure that you are growing the inside first before you push other things that you see their talents or whatever because that's huge. That's going to carry them through their whole life and raising their kids. So it's important. Don't let that in them be worldly you want that to be spiritual right that you're you're growing in them inside you know I was watching one time we used to travel a lot as evangelists and I would watch the maids when they would come in the room to get different tips and stuff to you know to be a good housewife when we got married so um I would watch and they they would take a pillowcase and turn it inside out and then put it on the edge of the pillow and then shake it that way instead of trying to stuff your pillow into the so from the inside out that's how they worked that and then it looked really nice right when it was over so if we can raise our kids from the inside out they're going to look good no matter what yeah. right because jesus is shining through them right. Right now, i think you had something i was just going to say it was crazy because i hadn't said that one i'm growing in the lord waxing strong in spirit i hadn't said that probably like 14 maybe 16 years and she said, you remember she started it? And it automatically came back in my mind. It was like, yeah. and that's what happens when you put the word in. Right. It's there. That's right. And man, when the enemy comes, man, that's where the word comes back yeah. out, right? They're perfect timing. And the, the cool thing about a mom is that mom, being a mom, it was God's, it's God's idea. And God loved it so much that he had his own son be raised by a mom. That's right. Man. You know, he created Adam out of the dirt. That's right. But he brought Jesus in through a mom. That's awesome. And it's just an interesting thought that, hey, his if God values it so much, he wants his own son to be raised by a mom, how much, you know, and vital is it in, you know, that God would choose, you know, like some of the moms on stage to raise kids? Yeah. And uh, how cool of an opportunity is that to be a mom, to shape the future world changers? So I just want to say, Thank you, Mom, for everything that you did. Um, I can't—I don't know of one time. 
I can't think of one time you ever raised your voice. I do remember one time that it was slightly raised, but that's because <laughs> I drove our van over some trees you just planted. <laughs> And that was yeah. the only time she raised, it was her crepe myrtles. Yeah. I accidentally backed into, yeah. I hit the crepe myrtles and then five feet back from that was an electrical box. Thankfully I did not hit that. Um, that was the only time, because she loves her crepe myrtles, but <laughs> I, that is something to be said that I've never, thankfully, thank God, and because of them, we're not, I'm not gonna raise our girls like that, but I've never heard them raise their voice at us or lose their anger or cuss at us or anything. And in some families, that's a normal way of yeah. communication. But yeah. I think the closer you get to Jesus, the more non-normal that becomes. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say thank you for being an awesome mom and raising me right. Um, and I love you. And happy Mother's Day, too. You're welcome. You know, I think uh, we have a great standard. Uh, this lady right here next to me, uh, because we had wonderful mothers, we knew the standard. And she is a great standard. Uh, and I think what's interesting is that I say this because even if you're a mother, a young mother right now, one day your children are going to be getting married. And if you're raising boys, they're going to be looking for a mother figure. Not necessarily. Uh, somebody just like their mother, but they're going to be looking for the, the characteristics of their mom in their wife. And I think that's what our boys did. They found the characteristics of their mom, and all of our daughter in loves, as you call them, um, their number one passion is Jesus. Number one. I mean, their number one commitment and value is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that's what. And so I want to say to you moms out there, um, maybe you didn't have a godly mother. Maybe you didn't have a great uh, role model. But you can become that for your children. Believe it or not, your kids are going to be 18, 20, 24, 25. And they're going to be 30 before you know it. They're going to be looking for a, a soulmate. And uh, you have an opportunity right now to reveal to them and show them the kind of godly mother that they want to uh, want to have raising their children and we pass that blessing on and so we're fortunate and we know how blessed we are to have great heritage to come from multiple generations of God-fearing mothers and parents and maybe you don't have that but you can start that in the name of Jesus and uh, I just want to bless you today and I want to encourage you moms Holy Spirit is here to help you uh, you know when you don't know what to say and when you don't know what to do and when you've done all you can do, the Bible says that God will instruct your children. And there were times when they weren't listening to us, so I'd go tell God, and we'd start talking to them because they're not hearing our voice. And you know what? God would do that. He would start talking to our children. And they would, by the grace of God and the help of the Lord, because we had taught them the value of the voice of the Lord, as Cindy mentioned earlier, they listened to his voice, and that voice began to draw them to a place of surrender and submission. And today, as we wrap this time up, it's been an awesome time. Thank you guys for coming and being with us. And the wisdom that's been shared here has been rich. Uh, we could go on and on and on and talk about this for a long time because there's so much wealth and, and, and knowledge on this stage. But I just want to say to our mothers that we love you, and we want you to know that God has a great, great plan for your children and you're a big part of that plan and you're going to make a big difference in your children's life and you may say well my kids are grown don't ever underestimate the power of prayer mom maybe you have a wayward child maybe they're teenagers maybe they're adults and they're not living for God God hears your prayers God answers your prayers and I'm telling you right now a lot of people are serving the Lord today because mama prayed and grandma prayed. And so I want to encourage you right now. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. Don't underestimate the power of, of uh, living the life, the example that you show. Because Jesus will reveal himself and he'll answer those prayers to those children. Hallelujah. If you're looking at us today and watching us online, um, love to hear from you. Comment to us. 
I want to lead you in a, in a prayer. I'm going to lead you in a, a sinner's prayer. I believe there's some people watching today that need to give their life to Christ. And uh, you might be a mom, you might be a dad, you might be a single individual, maybe a teenager, doesn't matter. And, uh, but we want you to know Jesus wants to shine through you. Just like Samson, Jesus wants to make himself real through your life. And I want to lead you in a prayer. And then I'm going to ask my wife to pray a blessing over the mothers before we go today. But first, let me pray with you. And uh, would we just all pray together here as we pray a prayer that would bring somebody back to Jesus today. Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for coming. I put my faith in you. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Come and live in my life. Be my Savior and be my Lord. I commit my ways to you, and I desire to follow you all the days of my life. Lead me, guide me, direct me in the steps and the paths I should go, and let my life be a light that shines the love of God through. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want my wife and mother of my children and the mother of this house to pray a blessing over all the mothers out here today before we go. I want to close with this I found that's really profound about mothers. Um, it says, if there is righteousness in her heart, there will be beauty in her character. If there's beauty in her character, there will be harmony in the family home. If there's harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. When there's order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. That's just, that's just how um, important mothers are. Yeah. So let me pray over your mothers today. Dear Holy Father, I pray blessings, mighty, mighty blessings over all mothers. Yeah. Whether they're older in, <clears throat> in years or young mothers or mothers that are about to have babies, Lord, I pray that your hand be over them. Your wraparound presence is with them, God, and you will guide them. You will give them your wisdom. Lord, we cry out for your wisdom, not our own. And we do pray that the steps of the righteous are order of the Lord and that you will guide mothers to know how to raise, to know how to love, to know how to care. Just, Lord, I just pray that you will minister right now to them. Reach out to them and let them know that they are not alone. Those single mothers, Father God, I lift to you. I pray that you give them strength and guidance and wisdom and financial help, Father God. And I pray that you will, Lord, just... Bless each mother in an incredible way, from old in the 90s down to young mothers, in Jesus' name. And we all thank you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. This has been awesome. I look forward to doing this again soon, guys. This has been great. Thank you for being a part of this day and this service. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. We love you.